I wish all the tourists would stay home and not come here anymore. So our work is to rescue the children from this evil and to give them the true dignity that they deserve. A house in the Philippines, 80 miles from the capital city of Manila. Preda, a home for sexually abused girls. Their screams form a wail of accusation. They are remembering what was done to them. This is part of their therapy. In a room on the top floor of the building, they are learning to deal with their pain. They are told to go back to the day when their childhood was abruptly put to an end. Just scream it all out. Fight back in your head against the men who used you and then threw you away. Preda was founded in 1974 as a drug treatment center for young people. Today, this house in Olangapo is the only shelter for abused girls in the Philippines. One of the supporters of the project is the German Kindernothilfe, assistance for children in need. 36 girls live here. All of them are victims of rape and prostitution. The offenders, their own father, family acquaintances, or tourists. The girls range in age from 7 to 17 years. Cast out by their own families, they found a new home here. Most of them go to school, learn singing, dancing, and how to laugh again. Father and priest of the girls is Shea Cullen, a member of the St. Columba Missionary Order. This Irishman came to the Philippines in 1969 as a young priest. These children are his whole life. In the process of helping them, he's been imprisoned and beaten up several times. This was the Vietnam War time, and the U.S. military was here in Alangapo and had a huge naval base. The first time I went, it was really, I was really shocked, you know, I mean, I'd never seen anything like this before, you know, and I was uh, amazed because, um, you know, a pimp came over and offered me, you know, asked me did I want to have a, you know, a child, you know, for sex. It, they thought I was a tourist. So, you know, that really opened up my eyes to the terrible problem that was uh, going on here, as well as the drug abuse and the violence and the many, many crimes in this city and it's mostly crimes against women and children. So I was really emotionally disturbed by it. The history of Olangapo is by no means unique in Southeast Asia. During the Vietnam War, Subic Bay was one of the biggest supply bases for the U.S. Naval Forces. At that time, there were up to 60,000 prostitutes here. The city's economy depended on the soldiers. They came here to forget the murdering and killing. The city became the world's largest brothel. Back then, even four-year-olds were for sale. In 1992, the inhabitants here succeeded in forcing the Americans to close their bases and leave the country. The grounds of the former military base were supposed to become a new industrial park. But soon after the U.S. troops were gone, sex tourists took their place. Hungry for younger and younger girls, the Philippines became a disgraceful theme park for pedophiles. While unemployment soars in the countryside, in the cities, the red light districts are flourishing. Poverty still drives many girls here into prostitution. Today, the number of underage prostitutes is estimated to have reached 100,000, a Disneyland for every kind of male perversion. Arrests are rare. The offenders are often wealthy businessmen from all over the world. No one at home would ever suspect these men of being capable of the kind of havoc they and a steady stream of new sex tourists are wreaking here. Shea Cullen 
has devoted his life to trying to stop them. He painstakingly follows up on every clue to possible pedophiles. Here we are looking at the uh, file of our, you know, suspected pedophiles that have come to us over the years. Here we have, uh, the nationalities are very interesting. You know, we have American, you can see a long list of uh, American names here. These were found on the, on the folders of an American pimp who had many customers and he supplied little children. You know, there's Australians now, there's quite a few Belgians. We have a lot of British on this list, Canadians, Danish, you know, lots of Dutch, French. There's many, there's quite, not so many French, but uh, enough French already here, as you can see, quite a few. Uh, there's the names, no, but we can't reveal the names. No, at this time, then the Germans, well, that's a very big list. That's the, uh, our biggest list here is the German uh, names, as you can see them running down here. Shea Cullen was able to make one of the most spectacular arrests here by coincidence. Once again, he succeeded in doing it single-handedly. From his balcony, he saw a yacht dropping anchor. He saw that some children were alone with a man on board. He sounded the alarm so vehemently that the authorities had no choice but to send some civil servants to check out the boat. They found three children on board. All of them had been sexually abused. The explanation given by the offender, an Australian, the children had come on board all by themselves. He was sentenced to 16 years in a Philippine prison. In the foreground, wearing the captain's hat, is the offender, and behind him, Shea Colin. He took care of the abused children. Two of them had been sold into prostitution by their own family. Even at 57, Shea Colin still keeps on the prowl. With a hidden camera, he hunts both victims and suspects. He pretends to be a British tourist looking for some fun. His goal tonight, Angela City, two hours from Olangapo. Well, uh, yes, tonight uh, we have information that there are two minors, no, two, two young girls who are, uh, we're not sure of the exact age, but we know they're about 16 or even might be 15 years old, who have been uh, taken into the sex club in Angeles City and uh, we are going to go over and see can we talk to them and persuade them to come out of the club and uh, maybe offer them a new chance to start life again. That's all we can do. Until 1992 there was a military base in the city of Angels as well. In Olangapo, Shea Colon's battle eventually led to success. Many bars have closed. In Angeles, however, sex tourism is still flourishing. Wall-to-wall -wall bars. Cameras are taboo here. The men want to remain incognito with their girls. We're forced to film with a hidden camera. Even though underage prostitution is officially against the law in the Philippines, trouble with the authorities is rare here. Many simply pocket hush money and ask questions later, rubbing soldiers nonchalantly with the sex tourists. Canada, I'm from Germany. Every imaginable country is represented here. We pretend we're unsuspecting sex tourists. Over a few beers, the customers start to get talkative. Are they good ladies? Oh, so good ladies, yeah. For real good workers. Really? It's like what? Is everything that? Oh, uh, yeah. AIDS is apparently not an issue for these men. This tourist has been coming here for 10 years. Can you take the girls with you to your hotel? I'm staying at the Lafayette. Yeah, sure. But you would use a condom, right? Yeah, you probably could, yeah. You hear so many rumors about this place, you know. Uh, but actually, it's really clean here. I never use them myself. Shea Cullen has found the club where the really young girls supposedly work, a bar just like any other. None of the girls up on stage look any older than 18 to us.
This is the, the slave market, no? We're looking here in the slave market of the human beings, their commodities, and they're all here for sale right now. And it's a very painful thing to see human beings dehumanized in this way. The men are having a great time here, partying with little girls. Cecilene and Marlene are the names of the girls Shea Cullen is looking for. He has documents showing they're underage and that they work here. We asked to see work permits for the girls. According to their IDs, they're all well over 18. But IDs like these, with fake names and birth dates, cost $15 on the streets of Manila. The two girls aren't here tonight. Shea Cullen talks with the madam, called Mama-san here. They told uh, that uh, this, uh, Cecilene. Cecilene is not working with me. I have Marlene. What do you have, Marlene? Okay. She's going to call Marlene now. Oh, the, the, the girl we're looking for. And uh, we'll see if she's here. Yeah, we have to see her ID. Sir, Marlene is not around this evening. She will call. A failure. Shea Cullen thinks that someone recognized him, and that's why they won't show us the girl. Return trip to Olangapo. Some of the girls at Prada were rescued by Shea Cullen in exactly the same way. Gemma is now 17. She's been at Prada for two years. She worked for two weeks in a bar in Angeles. Whatever happened to her during that time, she still hasn't been able to talk about it yet. I was raped a lot by my father and then I ran away. I met a girl who told me that she could get me a job in Angeles. I thought I'd be working as a waitress, but then they gave me a bikini and I had to dance with the other girls in the club. It was horrible. All of these men who just wanted our bodies. Then, after two weeks, a man came and paid for me for a night, but he didn't go to a hotel with me. We went to McDonald's instead. It was Father Shea. He told me who he was and that there was a place for me at Prada. I went there with him immediately, and since then, I've been staying here at Prada. The girls want justice to be done, but for that to happen, they first have to testify in court. In the same room with their rapist watching, they have to utter the unspeakable in front of a crowd of people. To make sure they're able to get the words out when the time comes, they get a chance to rehearse the courtroom scenario at Prada. Do you remember what happened when you were seven years old? Can you tell me what happened? She was uh, raped. Ilang beses kang ginawa sa iyo yun? She can't uh, remember how many times she was raped. Araw-araw ba o minsan isang linggo? Araw-araw. Almost every day. Anong trabaho ng daddy mo? Tiga kabit po ng ilaw. Fixing mo what? Electric. Electrician. Did your daddy do something bad to you? Hindi nagwawa siyang masama sa iyo. Yeah. What did he do to you? Ano yung gano'n niya sa'yo? Ano ginawa niya sa'yo? He waited until everyone was in bed, and then he came to me. I felt something inside me, and it hurt. Well, sometimes they make, they stare at them with an angry look, you know, huh? yeah. or other times they will make a gesture like, you know, we're going to kill you if you say anything. Yeah, they really have that terrible, we try to sit in front of the, the staffers, we try to sit in front of the, the accused to block him from, you know, looking at the children in a bad way. So that's a technique also. Pia has all of this behind her already. When she was 11, a German tourist tied her to a bed and brutally raped her. He was arrested in the Philippines, but got out on bail and fled back to Germany. 
Shea Colon made sure that all of the necessary documents were submitted to the district attorney's office in Germany. Only then could the crime be prosecuted there. Shea Colon accompanied both girls during their testimony. Judge Heinz Wilhelm Faupel of the Iserlohn District Court still remembers this case vividly and that without Shea Colon's help, the perpetrator would still be at large. In the Akte waren die Mädchen als Zeugen benannt. In the case file, the girls were named as witnesses, including an address at the institution led by Shea Colon in the Philippines where the summons could be sent. I conferred with the district attorney's office and found out that it was possible to arrange through Shea Colon for the girls to come to Germany. Victims of rape are not uncommon, but convictions are. The defendant was sentenced to three and a half years in prison. Today, Pia is 15 years old. Ever since that night, when her legs were wrenched apart with ropes, she wishes she would never see another tourist again. The foreigners should just stay home. I don't want them to come here. Why are they allowed to just come and go as they please? It's about time we Filipinos started being proud of ourselves and not depend on outsiders anymore. Why don't we have any control over our tourists? Leave us alone. I don't want any tourists coming into my country. What kind of person is capable of abusing children like this? What must go on in a person's head to allow him to do such things? Questions Shea Colon still has a hard time answering. They are very dominating in many ways, and so therefore they look for, uh, they look for um, a partner who they can sexually dominate and control. And uh, they need someone who, who is submissive and docile, you know, and surrendering to them. You know, that's what they want. The girls can stay at Preda for two to three years. Most of them are then stable enough to go out on their own and finish their schooling. And they've learned something else by then as well, that they too are allowed to hold on to their dreams. They're looking for love and security and want to believe in a happy future. This is evidenced in their drawings. Of course, official sources continue to claim that child prostitution in the Philippines is a problem of the past. After all, it's against the law. But it's still possible to procure underage girls. Back in Angeles City, this time without Shea Colon. He's already too well known here to search the streets for girls. He waits in the car. After a short time, we've found what we're looking for. Come here. You've got something of 15, 15 year old. 16. Oh, yes. yes. In the other bar, they have. In the other bar? Which bar is that? There are many young girls there. But what bar would, were, were you saying is that? The lollipop they have over there. The lollipop? Just walking. The lollipop, they've got young girls there? Many in the Golden Gate. They have. Is it under 18 there? Yeah, oh, wonderful. Like that. We want to know if that's really true, so we enter the lollipop. Even the pedophile scene has its own code language. Inside the bars, you don't ask for a young girl, but for a virgin instead. The madam is used to this kind of request. Is it possible to get uh, a virgin in the Angeles? It depends. If you want virgin, you, you pay more money. How much no, money? Can... Have you got no, one here? Sorry? It depends the lady. Is it? Example, I am a fairy girl and you want me to have a sample. You want to bring my fairy and you get them by the It depends. Have you got a virgin here? Virgin here? Can you? One soul. Which one? One soul. Okay. Can I, can I talk to them? We want to speak with the girl. She's led to our table. We estimate her to be about 15. 
What? Hello. What is your name? Hassel. Hassel. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. How long are you here now? One month. One month, is it? All right. You like it? Maybe. Maybe. Not really. You don't really like dancing here. What made you come here? Because of the some problems, financial problems. I like studying here. Italy. Yes. You like to go to school, study, and all that. All right. So you never, you never had sex with a customer before? No. No. Would you have sex with me? <laughs> oh shit. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. No sex, huh? Is that better? We explained to Hassel that we only want to get something to eat with her. Then we plan to get Shay Colin, who can perhaps persuade the girl to leave here. But it seems that we've already aroused suspicion. We weren't insistent enough with Hassel and just talked with her instead of making demands. Not normal for a man who comes here to deflower a young girl. When we try to give Mama San the money, the situation gets out of hand. She calls for the owner to come and check us out. We end up having to leave the girl there. We get away just in time. We run back to the car where Shea Cullen is waiting. Did, did you not go in? No, I went inside there as well. We explain the situation to him. He looks at our film. Then we turn off the camera. Suddenly, a policeman approaches the car and threatens us with his gun drawn. The bar owner probably alerted the policeman to get rid of us in order to protect his dirty business. Shea Colin succeeds in taking us out of the situation. The next morning, we show Shea Colin our material again. This is one of the typical cases of the children who are migrating from the rural areas in the far province. They're escaping poverty and coming into the cities, and they get uh, seduced and lured into the sex industry. This young girl is very young. I'd say she's only about 15, and uh, she's already, you know, trapped in the slavery system. And uh, she's telling us that she would really very much like to get out, and she'd like to go to school and be educated. She's obviously realized that she's enslaved no, in this uh, system, and that uh, she sees the abuse that's going on around her. So some way and some day we will really try to rescue her and get her out of the club, as we've done with other young girls that we found in the nightclubs and in the bars, which are really the fronts for prostitution. Beatings and murder threats all in a day's work for Shea Colon. German pimps in the Philippines are battling him as well. Last year, they got a minor to accuse Father Shea of raping her. Father Shea had to go into hiding for several months. Finally, he was able to prove that the girl was forced by the pimps to present false testimony. A hard-won triumph on the father's long march. When we have the evidence, we'll bring it to the authorities and we will pressure the authorities to act and do something, you know, to bring to justice these abusers and give justice to the children. Then that's when we receive all these threats that you talk about. And we get death threats, we get fax messages, no? Oh, we heard they paid $10,000 for your life. Oh, you know, <laughs> only $10,000, you know, what's a life worth? The life of these children are worth so much more. Money can never replace the value of our lives. It's only when the rich people themselves, they look at all their riches and they say, I don't have happiness. So what good is all their riches? Every time they try to destroy Jesus and stop his work, and we feel that you know these threats that you talk about, and all these harassments we receive, and all these false charges, 
just like Jesus, you know, I mean, every day they were trying to catch him out. They were trying to build a case against him. They were trying to get evidence. They even said he was possessed by uh, the, 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 the devil, no? Uh, I think they say all those things about me, too. <laughs> so I'm in good company, you know, if I'm uh, getting the same treatment as they gave Jesus. And as you say, they beat us up on the streets sometimes. Yeah, you know, it's happened. But like you say, it's, uh, it's part of the job. This is what we have to accept is uh, this harassment and threats and violence against us. But Jesus accepted that, and that's part of the work. So we, uh, let's do it. Apart from the care and love that the girls find at Pleda, one thing is more important than all others. After all the terrible times they've been through, they finally get to experience what it feels like to be a child again. This is Father Shea Colin's life's work. He's been nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize.